So welcome to the live. Um, my name is Michelle, and if you are watching the replay of this, I'm streaming it in my live. I'm streaming it live in my group. It's called Soul Purpose Activation. And God, this is bouncing around a lot, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, so this is called Soul Purpose Activation. Um, if you're not familiar with the group, just check out in the description box of the YouTube video, and I'll put the link down there, and you can request an ad. Okay. Um, so today I'm going to be teaching you all about how to, uh, how to read tarot for yourself. All right. This is tarot for beginners. Now I will say that what we're not going to be talking about is, um, like descriptions of each, each card. Okay. Um, there's a lot of resources. There's a lot of books, a lot of videos that are available for that. Um, what I want to do is talk to you about like the best practices. Okay what mind frame you need to be in when you are reading. I'll kind of give you some shortcuts in order to kind of help you um, retain some information about the descriptions and stuff like that. Um, but it's more of a, you know, how to put yourself in a position so that you're able to interpret the, the messages correctly. And number one, I can tell you right off the bat, the first place that you have to start is your connection with yourself. Um, you got to be able to really trust yourself. You got to be um, in a place with yourself where whatever messages come through, you're feeling confident that um, what you are receiving is in fact a true message, okay? And honestly, the only way that you can know that for sure is just by practice, okay? This is um, like muscle memory. That's the only way you're really gonna get really good at being able to read tarot cards is by practicing, okay? Um, so first let's talk about where to start, okay? When you're starting um, with your tarot cards. Now I did instruct people in this, you know, in, for this tutorial to um, make sure that you're doing like a writer, you know, a writer weight smith deck the RWS deck, okay? Because these kinds of tarot cards, this is like the original, the original tarot cards of which all other tarot decks, um, whether they are redesigned, um, reimagined, repurposed or not, are, you know, can be very loosely based on the original um, Rider Waite Smith deck, okay? And so, you know, look for decks that look something like this. I'm trying to figure out how this <laughs> camera is situated, all right? Um, and I'll leave a link in the comments as well to some different Rider Waite decks you can you can look at. Um, but this is pretty much what they look like, okay? Because if you can learn the the if you can learn from these decks, then you'll be able to read any all of the other decks that um, that are out there, okay? Now. Um, once you've found a deck that you can connect to or that you feel like you can connect to, um, and that's another thing, um, you really want to make sure that you kind of feel somewhat connected to, you know, your deck. And so I'm a visual person. I can connect. I can know whether or not I'm going to connect to a deck simply by um, just looking at the imagery, okay? And so if you are someone who isn't really, like, you're not really that you know, you see this artwork and you're like, you're not connecting to this version of the Rider Waite deck. They have um, Rider Waite inspired decks with a lot more uh, better imagery like this, okay? Uh, more modern, um, you know, so you just have to find one that really speaks to you, okay? That you really can connect to. Um, they're out there. Now, if you are someone who is more kinetic, like you have to um, physically have your hands on it before you can really feel like you connect to it, that's fine. You know, there's a lot of, um, you know, in your, I'm pretty sure where you're at, you can find different, you know, different metaphysical type shops where you can go and look at decks and actually hold them in your hands. Um, and sometimes it's just one of those things where you're not going to know until you order it and you get it home and you break it out and then you look at all the each individual cards. You know, sometimes it's how it happens. But most of us are able to connect to a deck simply by looking at um, the imagery online, right? Um, and so 
Another shortcut to learning tarot is to buy a deck that has the keywords already on it, okay? I, I highly suggest that you maybe get on, um, look at, go through Etsy, um, maybe Amazon, mostly Etsy is where you're going to be getting a lot of the, the personalized, um, you know, different tarot decks that are repurposed, redesigned, and stuff like that, okay? That's a really good way to learn because, you know, see some of these uh, tarot decks for beginners will have some, um, will have the keywords on them. All right, so that's another way that you can really learn the meanings fairly quickly. Um, otherwise, the way that I suggest that you learn how to read tarot cards, the quickest and fastest way to really connect with the meanings on of the pictures and the, you know, the meanings of the pictures of each individual card is to um, do a weekly pull, a weekly tarot card pull of three cards, and then aside from that you do a daily pull okay this is the quickest way you're going to learn the um you know the the, the different meanings for the cards it's the absolute quickest way that you're going to be able to learn it and actually retain that information is by putting those things in action okay that's how i learned it now i also highly suggest if you're really really just starting out and you don't know a lot about tarot i would start out just reading um upright. I wouldn't read reversals until you have the um, upright meanings. Uh, you have a firm, solid understanding on the meanings of the cards in the upright position. Now, don't think that you're going to like miss out on anything by not reading reversals, honestly. Um, there's 78 cards in a deck <laughs> and um, there isn't really anything that each, that a card in reversal can provide you that a card that already exists in the upright can't, okay? So if you're just starting out, you're wanting to know how you can really learn the each individual descriptions for each individual card. There's 78 of them. Just start off by doing a, a weekly pull every week and then a daily pull every day, okay? So a weekly, you could, you know, three cards, um, I usually, if I'm doing a three pull spread, the first card will usually be something like, you know, where's, what energy am I in now? And then the next card will be, um, what's the best next, what's the best next step to take? And then the third card will be, you know, the best possible outcome. And then in parentheses will be, if I take the advice of step, you know, card number two. All right, so that's a three card spread. You can start for every week and then daily what you do is um, just do a card pull and you can, you know, just a single card for every day to kind of give you an idea of what you can expect for that day or, you know, you can make up whatever, you can set whatever intention you want for that card, okay? Um, so the most important thing you need to know about reading tarot is it's all about your intention, okay? Your intention is what sets the stage for your tarot card reading, okay? So my favorite thing to tell people as far as tarot goes is there are no, there's not any really set rules, okay? You have guidelines you can follow, especially once you really get going. Um, there are guidelines that you can follow, but as you become comfortable with reading cards and you become comfortable with um, your skill as a reader, you get comfortable with your ability to interpret the cards, you can pretty much create a spread for anything. Um, so just know going in that there, are no, there aren't really any rules um, as far as what best practices are. It really is just how, uh, what makes sense to you personally, because what makes sense to me may not make sense to you and that's totally okay. Um, Another thing about reading tarot is just understanding how it works, okay? All you're doing when you're reading tarot is you're just, you're interpreting energy. That's it. Reading tarot is like, um, tarot cards is very much like a radio. You know, radio interprets um, radio wave energy and translates it into, um, into you know a modality that we can understand, into languages that we can understand, right? Tarot cards are the same thing. 
um, if you think about psychic information when you are tapping yourself into it, I mean, just like radio waves, every single station is available all at the same time. And so all a radio does is with the dial allows you to tune in to a certain frequency so you can listen to that one rather than opening up, you know, all of the frequencies up all at the same time. It would just be chaos. That's what tarot cards do. Okay. Tarot cards very much do the same thing in that, you know, um, if you're, you know, picking a reading and you pick a card, you've got 78 different cards here of different energies that could be happening and tarot narrows it down and lets you know, okay, this is what direction it's going in. You know, there's nothing mystical, there's nothing mystical about tarot cards. Um, I know some of the imagery can feel, you know, scary. Some of the imagery can feel dark. Um, case in point, I'll see if I can pull them up. There's like, you know, the devil card. <laughs> there's the death card, the ten of swords, the three of swords. You know, we there are there is some dark imagery, but that doesn't mean that it's evil. We, there's dark things that go on in life, right? And so, you know, there's just, there's a tarot card in here that is indicative for every stage, every experience, every emotion. You know, here's the Three of Swords. It's kind of a, <laughs> you know, not a scary energy. This is kind of like a heartbreaking energy, you know, but it's not everything is sun and rainbows, right? You know, there's a card for that, but not every card, you know, not every experience is going to be you know, apple orchards and rainbows. So we have cards in here that look a little bit scary. They look dark, but that's because we go through times that are scary and dark. And that's all this is. This this isn't evil. This is just a picture on a card. What this is symbolizing is whatever, um, you know, the devil, this card in particular, um, you know, translates into addiction, self-sabotage, things of that nature. It's just a picture describing um, the energy of what's going on at the time. And so you don't have to be afraid of the imagery on the cards. All it is doing is just explaining to you what energy you're in. Okay, this looks scary. It looks dark. It looks painful. But that's because we go through times in life that are dark, scary, and painful, right? All right, so... You know, if you don't have to worry about reading tarot cards, like if they're going to, you know, open up portals to whatever, um, I mean, they, it could, it just depends on how you're using them. Um, I mean, honestly, with, if you don't know this already, your intention is the most powerful creative, um, force in the universe. Uh, your intention is everything. Now, if all you're wanting to do is just read energy and that's what you're using the tarot cards for, then you don't have to worry about opening portals up to other dimensions, right? Um, just like you can use a radio to communicate with the dead, you can use a, a radio to open a portal. Um, you have to have the intention to do that though. Um, just like you can use a mirror to open up a portal and communicate with the dead, but you have to have the intention to do that. Um, otherwise, it's just a mirror, it's just a radio, it's just a TV, <laughs> right? So there is no reason to fear tarot cards. It's just a way to translate energy into a modality that you can understand, okay? All right, so let's get into some tarot basics real quick. Um, I won't, like I said, we're not going to be talking about individual meanings of the cards, um, but I will give you some shortcuts that will kind of help you um, quickly kind of learn um, the different meanings, like give you some pointers, I guess you could say. So um, the tarot is, it consists of 78 cards. It's a pretty large deck, okay, 78 cards. And um, it's divided into the major arcana and the minor arcana. So the major arcana is 22 cards. It's numbered zero through 21. So the first card in the, uh, in the whole entire deck is the Fool, which is zero. And then it goes all the way to card number 21, which is the World, okay? Now what you need to understand about the minor, or sorry, the major arcana, the Trump cards, as they're also known, is um, they, if a Trump card comes up in a spread, that is like your higher self's way of letting you know that position and that card and whatever position it holds 
is of very great importance. There's really something huge or big going on in that area that needs to be looked at, okay? And that's why they call them trump cards because if you have a spread that predominantly has a lot of minor arcana cards and then you have a couple of trump cards in there somewhere, those trump cards trump the minor arcana in whatever position they're in, okay? They pretty much... Um, like when I'm doing a reading and I see a lot of a lot of uh, major arcana or trump cards in the spread, to me that denotes like, okay, this is a big life cycle. It's either starting or they're in the middle of it or it's wrapping up depending on the card. Or it can also um, signify like, you know, a karmic situation that's playing out. It could um, signify destiny. I mean, that these are, um, you know, the meanings of the trump cards are very, very important, okay? And so it's kind of like, um, this is energy you really need to pay attention to and, you know, things of that nature. Um, and then you have the other, okay? You've got the minor arcana cards and it consists of four different suits, okay? So you've got wands, you got the suit of wands, you got the suit of wands, the suit of cups, the suit of pentacles, and then the suit of four, uh, swords, <laughs> all right? And so, um... The really simple way of learning the different meanings of the four different suits is to know that each different suit corresponds to um, one of the elements as well as um, the elements signs. Okay, so for instance, if you uh, pull a wand, so the suit of wands is all about fire. Okay, so wand energy is fire energy. Uh, fire obviously corresponds to all of the fire signs. And so you have the um, fire signs are Sagittarius, Aries, and Leo, okay? Um, fire energy is all about passion, motivation, creativity, um, things of that nature. And so if you pull a wand card, for instance, you know, um, think about aces. Aces in every suit signifies new beginnings. And so um, an ace of wands lets you know that there is a new beginning in the area of motivation, passion, some new creative project or something like that going on, okay? Uh, then you have the suit of uh, cups, all right? Cups are water energy, and then of course water energy corresponds to the different water signs, which is Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. And so, um, Water energy is all about emotion, okay? Energy of love and relationships. And so if you pull the Ace of Cups, you automatically know that there's going to be a new beginning in the area of love and relationships, all right? Um, so next we move on to the suit of Pentacles. Um, pentacles corresponds to the um, element of Earth, all right? And then obviously that corresponds to Earth signs, which is uh, Capricorn, Virgo, and Taurus. And so if you pull, say, for instance, the... Um, ace of pentacles then you're going to know there's some kind of a new beginning in the area of business finance uh, material something based in the material realm okay and then last if you have the suit of swords the uh, suit of swords corresponds to the air element which corresponds to um, all of the air signs and so you got um, Libra Aquarius and what's the other one Libra Aquarius Gemini. How did I? How could I forget Gemini? <laughs> All right, Libra, Aquarius, and Gemini are the Earth sign, are the the air signs, and so what? If you pull the um, pull the Ace of Swords, you're automatically going to know that it denotes some kind of a a new beginning in or a new start in communication, in uh, some kind of a new idea new concepts, things of that nature, okay? And this is pretty much how you can do this. So if you're, if you know numerology, you can learn the suits very, very quickly, okay? So for instance, two. Two always symbolizes like unity, uh, balance, things of that nature. And so if you pull like the two of cups, you know that the cups is um, water energy, which is like emotional energy, love energy, relationship energy. Then the two of cups is going to represent like a, a union right a, a union or a balance in the in the area of love and relationships okay so uh, one of the things that you can do is just get um, acquainted with numerology the numbers of 1 through 10 
okay and then that will help you learn quickly what the different tarot cards in those suits mean and then um each suit also has the court cards so we've got the um, page the knight the um page knight queen and the king okay in each separate suit all right and so that's how you can really learn the different um that's kind of a shortcut but i still highly highly recommend that you get your hands on a few different books um look on youtube for you know extended meanings if you're someone that likes to watch rather than read um and then that'll help you while you're learning okay while you're doing your daily card pulls um while you're doing your weeklies as well things of that nature all right so now we talk about how like actual practices okay so the first thing you want to do when you get a tarot deck um is you know especially if you're not acquainted or you're not familiar with the, the imagery on the card um is pull it out and actually look at every single different picture okay this helps you get connected with the deck and get familiar with it okay um, and that's what really all that you have to do in the very beginning now some people will do cleansing rituals um, and you surely you can you can do that if you want to they'll sit there and they'll do special rituals to program their decks and stuff like that um, I don't personally do that I have a whole new different way of um, being and believing um, and my intention trumps everything and so it's like for me I, I wholeheartedly believe that my intention trumps any other intention that may have been programmed on the deck any energies that may have been picked up by the de by the deck um, I just automatically know once these are in my possession once my intention are on these these are mine and they are programmed with my energy immediately okay so i don't necessarily i don't do any kind of cleansing rituals i don't sleep with them under my pillow um i don't sage them i don't i don't do anything like that okay um i use my intention to clear them and it happens instantly the minute i hold the, them in my hand the minute i start like flipping through them and having my my eyes and my awareness on them automatically clears them okay um otherwise if you you're someone who loves doing rituals and stuff like that by all means you can do some of the cleansing um practices that people do you know they'll leave them out in the moonlight if there's a full moon um you can set you know different crystals that are meant for cleansing and clearing like selenite um you know you can sage them if you want to if one of the ways you think you would be able to connect to them quicker is by putting them under your pillow and sleeping under them you can do that as well okay i do everything <laughs> i like to do everything simply um i also believe you know that i um my intention trumps all other intention and so uh, you know the minute that i get um, a deck in the mail or the minute that i buy one and i have it in my hand my intention automatically takes over okay um that's just how I, I i work and i've always worked um let's see what else um okay so if you get a brand new deck and it's the first time you've ever you know worked with it then obviously you know um just different ways of shuffling there isn't a, a best way to shuffle it's just whatever works with you um so when you're picking up your deck to work with it for the very first time um you might just want to kind of sit there and get a feel for it and so you'll go through each and every card look at all the different pictures and just start shuffling okay and if you are actually doing a reading for somebody what you want to do okay so if you're connecting to yourself if you're doing a reading for yourself you want to make sure that you are are connected to your higher self right if you haven't had time to meditate that day to really get yourself into the um into the space to read for me a very meditative thing to do is to sit here and actually shuffle the cards this really kind of gets me in just hearing feeling the cards in my hands hearing them hearing the the sound of them you know shuffle really drops me out of my head and into my body 
um, where you're able to connect to that part of yourself that is going to allow you to read for whomever, whether that is yourself or the other person, okay? Um, and I set an intention while I'm shuffling. It's like once while I'm shuffling, if a card pops out or if they just fall or do whatever, that lets me know that I'm connected, all right? That I'm connected and I'm ready to complete this reading. Um, if I am reading for someone else, you know, we want to be able to connect to that person's energy in order to um, read their energy, right? And so what you want to do, and now this is always with permission, you guys, okay? Um, I don't do readings on people unless I have their permission to do so. Um, that's just kind of a, what do they call that? Etiquette, okay? <laughs> that's etiquette. So when I'm sitting down to do a reading for someone, I'll set my awareness and my intention on connecting to them and their energy, um, their higher self, okay? I wanna get, I wanna connect to that person's energy and I wanna connect to that person's higher self um, so I can get the most accurate reading. And what I'll do is I'll just sit here and I set the intention while I'm shuffling that I am connecting to the higher self of whomever I'm reading for, okay? Now, how do I know that I'm connected? Sometimes it can just be a feeling like I just know. Other times um, I just wait for cards to start popping out and then I know that the reading has started and we're connected, okay? Um, these are very simple steps. I mean, I know a lot of people try to make it sound like it's very difficult to start reading and honestly, the hardest part about reading tarot is trusting yourself that you are interpreting the reading correctly that's the most difficult part and that and, and trusting and how in building your confidence and your trust in yourself as a reader really just comes with time okay um and you'll start to your your confidence as a reader starts to build the longer you work with the cards the more readings that you do for people um you know that's really all it takes it it just takes practice it takes time um takes consistency and just allowing yourself to trust yourself and realizing you might get some readings wrong you might tell somebody a reading that they may not resonate with at all and you know not and then being able to accept that maybe you did get it wrong and and, and still allowing yourself to continue okay it's just like any other exercise, you know, right, right when you first start out a um, exercise regimen, you know, you're not the best at it. <laughs> There's people all around you that are probably doing a lot better than you are because they've been doing it for longer. Uh, but if you keep practicing, you keep at it every single day, pretty soon your ability to read, um, you get right up there with everybody else, okay? Um, when you are reading, especially at the very beginning you do want to make sure that you are in a quiet space that you don't have a lot of um, distractions now i will say when you get better at reading that's not necessarily um, a requirement um, but it is just a lot better to be able to be in, in, a, in a meditative state and a quiet state so that you can you know really interpret the messages the way that they need to be interpreted because um, a lot of the times while you're reading messages and ideas and concepts will come up that are triggered by the cards um but aren't like it, you'll have messages that go above and beyond just the, the the card meaning okay and you just have to learn how to trust yourself that the messages that are coming through are indeed um intuitively given to you and you're you are intuiting them correctly all right um now let's talk about the differences because we have tarot cards okay tarot cards is a very it's a very closed system um tarot cards is very uniform um each deck no matter who it is um who it is you know the author and who it is being uh who it's made by this has 78 cards this has 78 cards. These are two different decks, but it's they're both tarot, okay? Now, the difference between tarot cards and oracle cards, every single oracle deck is different, okay? Every single oracle card. Tarot is a system, okay? It's a closed system. You'll have multiple different people recreating it using multiple different decks, but you can, the deck, I can use this deck and not need to know what the book, what's in the book. And I can use this one the same because they're, it's the exact same system, okay? Exact same system. 
Now, you know, all the different tar uh, Oracle decks that, that are out there, you know, this is why I love tarot because um, I don't need, I don't need the guidebook. <laughs> Once you get to know, like, you know, once you become very familiar, familiar with tarot, you don't need the guidebook. Um, even if it is something that is completely, you know, like this one, this is a tarot deck, right? But the imagery is completely different than the traditional Rider weight. but I don't need to know. I don't need this book because I, I know what the traditional meanings are. I can buy any tarot deck, that has, you know, it can look like anything. This is the Knight of Cups. This looks nothing like the Knight of Cups in the traditional Rider Waite at all, you know? Um, but because I know, look, here's the Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> that does not look like the Wheel of Fortune in the traditional Rider Waite. Um, but because this is based off of tarot, this is a tarot deck, it's based off of it. Um, I don't need, I don't need the, the guidebook. Now, uh, when it comes to oracle cards, oracle cards, they, they're, you know, it's not a closed system. Uh, this particular deck is called Whispers of the Ocean. There's only one deck like this, okay? Now, somebody else can create an oracle deck and name it Whispers of the Ocean, but it's not going to look anything like this at all, Okay. Um, it'll have completely different imagery, completely different. Um, it could have, you know, uh, more cards or less cards than this deck has, you know, different meanings for each card. You know, it's just, I, that's why I love, love, love Oracle card, or tarot cards. Um, I'm trying to think if I'm leaving anything out. Yeah, we've already talked about different spreads and stuff and how you can basically create your own. Um, a lot of the tarot, you know, there's books on not just the tarot meanings, but different tarot spreads too. And you honestly, you can create your own tarot spread. <laughs> you can. So there really is like, as far as best practices go, it really is just what you are familiar with and what you're guided to. Okay. Um, and what you feel led to do. It's all about you, how comfortable you are with yourself. Um, the confidence that you have in yourself as a reader as well as being able to just be really, um, what's that word? The ability to be very forgiving of yourself in case you just end up getting some wrong, because you will, every reader does. Every reader kind of misses the mark sometimes and you can do so for various, various reasons. All right, you guys, um, that was the class. I didn't have a lot of you on live, so just do me a favor. If you have any questions that I didn't touch upon on this live, just shoot them, put them in the box down below, and I will um, I'll answer them as I can. Okay, you guys? I got to get going. Love you. Bye.